Blackfeet. Smoke. Do you smell it, sir? job of it. Uh, they did that, sir. You'll probably find shovels in one of the wagons. Yes, sir. anything to be afraid of that couldn't be cured by one little word. You know what that word is? Courage. It can beat the toughest situation that ever happened. You see, when you're afraid of things, the more you think of them, the bigger they get. But if you just throw your head back and say, I won't be scared of anything anymore, then you are not. Aren't you ever afraid of anything? Well, uh, let's put it this way. When I meet up with something I'm not quite sure of, I decide, first of all, that everything's going to come out all right. Whatever it is, I'm going to lick it. And usually it does come out all right. You know what does it? Courage. Courage. Now, let's forget everything that made us unhappy. Let's learn to smile again, because we know everybody's going to do all they can to help us, so we'll help, too. What do you say? I'll try, Mr. Mundy. That's the girl. Now back to sleep. Good night. Good You're safe and... Shh. What have you got there? Quiet, quiet. Where in heaven's name did you get it, sir? You'll hear about that later. Is the superintendent still there? He is that. 
And if I told you the half of it, you I... will when I can't escape it. Give me a quick brush. I want to report in. I'm begging your pardon, sir. You can't go over there in them clothes. I've got other uniform all laid out. Why should I change uniforms at this time of night? The other, sir. Every one of them is dressed up like a widow would awake. And if you knew who was over there, it's... I wouldn't dandy up tonight to meet Lily Langtree. But, sir, it's the O.C.'s daughter. Will you stop that jabbering and brush me off? No, I suppose... I'll do it. Come on, come on, sir. Come on. I'll do it. What? Please let me. Now, look what you've done with your shouting. You're the worst old fish wife that ever came out of County Kildare. He's otherwise known as Patrick O'Hannigan. This is Miss Susanna Sheldon. Just call me Sue. Now, young lady, we'll have to arrain sleeping quarters for you. Where'll that be, sir? Your room. My... Do I sleep in with him? <laughs> no, that can sleep out here on the couch. Oh. But I wouldn't want to take Mr. Pat's room. Oh, that's all right. He'll be very comfortable out here, won't you, Pat? Oh, yes, sir. Very. Yeah, give this a lick. Let's see, uh, what about sleeping things? Uh, use one of my nightshirts. You might have to cut it down. Now, young lady, off to bed with you. Oh, wait. There's a hair on your shoulder the brush didn't get. Good night. Good night, Mr. Monty. Come on, I'll fix the bed for you. I'll help you. I didn't mean to intrude, sir. I've come to make my report. But come in, won't you? I want you to meet my daughter. She's come out from Toronto for a visit. Well, I'm, I'm hardly presentable, sir. I... <laughs> Perfectly all right. Come along. Well, look who's here. Hello, Monty. Hello, fellas. Hi, old boy. Hi, Vicky. Monty. This is Inspector Montague. I'm very happy to know you, Mr. Montague. It's a pleasure, Miss Standing. Won't you join us? Or perhaps you'd like a glass of sherry? Not a thing, thanks. Well, you'll need something to fortify you. We'll probably have more singing. Vino Monty, he'll be right along with us. He's just the baritone we've been looking for. We really are having a little baritone trouble. No, no, I say no, just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be glad to as soon as I make my report. Well, that won't take long. Excuse me? Certainly. Uh, doctor, do you mind getting my hat for me? Certainly. You're not going. What's left for me? It's baritone or nothing. Good night, old boy. It's nothing. To... <laughs> oh, Pat, you old pal. Why didn't you tell me to change uniforms? Why, she's a beauty. Tell you? I did tell you. You didn't tell me anything of the kind. Those are things you should tell me. But uh, you said you wouldn't dare be up for Lily Langford. Oh, Lily Langford couldn't hold a candle to her. Yeah, get off these boots and get me a clean shirt. Yes, sir. Come on. Yes, sir. When did she get here? You didn't even tell me she was young. Two days ago, sir. And I had to be away on patrol. Why, she's beautiful. She's as pretty as a picture. <laughs> what the? Why aren't you in bed? I'm helping, sir. Here's your shirt. Don't you know it's past 11 and regulations for enlisted men are lights out at 10? Good. Yes, sir. Good night. Good night. Run along now. Here, unbutton that shirt. You. You let me go over there looking like a hayseed to meet the most beautiful. Not that I care how I look, but out of respect for her. I'm, I'm sure she'll understand, sir. You didn't even tell me she had blue eyes. And deep blue eyes at that. You know, Dad didn't think I should come, even for a visit, but I'm here. You may find it a little rugged. You know, I've been wondering. What? Well, whatever made a man like you take a job like this? There are times when it's rather humdrum, but... Right now, you're here. And I'm going to change things. Inspector Montague, we're going to give a dance on Wednesday night. A real one. Dress uniform and frills. A dance? Well, you do dance, don't you? Well, I... Oh, yes, yes, of course, thank you. <laughs> Splendid. And being the only woman in the vicinity, I'm bound to be popular. <laughs> <laughs> Chambers. Hello, sir. Hello, Inspector. What's the trouble? Anything wrong? Indian raid. Four of my workmen wounded, and they've stolen 20 head of horses. If we hadn't caught them in time, they'd have cleaned out the whole corral. Inspector, turn out 10 men. Yes, sir. Mr. Randall? Sir? You'll take out the patrol. 
Go to the construction camp and track down the raiders. Yes, sir. I'll need your doctor, too, sir. Then come inside. We'll get him. Oh, doctor. Harlan. Why, Vicky, what on earth are you doing here? Came out for a visit. Well, why, why didn't you let me know you were coming? I didn't even let Dad know I was coming, did I? <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, she didn't. Oh, doctor. Yes, sir. Go back to camp with Mr. Chambers. You're needed, Dad. I'll get my kit, sir. Mr. Churchill, check the guard. Prepare for any emergency. Yes, sir. You may be able to assist him, Mr. Williams. Yes, sir. Good night, Miss Standing. Good night. Anything serious, Dad? Good night. Just a little Indian trouble at my camp. Nothing for you to worry about. It's hardly the best time for you to have come out here, Vicky. But I can't tell you how pleased I am to see you. Oh, don't tell me I leave you speechless, Harlan. <laughs> you always did. Superintendent, why didn't you give me notice? I'd have met her at Winnipeg and brought her out here on a special. You didn't give the Canadian Pacific a chance. Well, we'll see what can be done about that in the future. You bet we will. The patrol's ready, Mr. Chambers. Oh, thank you, sir. Well, Vicky, I'll be back for a real visit as soon as we've settled with these horse thieves. Good night. Good night and good luck. Thanks. We need it. Thank you, Superintendent. Not at all. Good night. Good night. Good night, Lord Hunt! Probably the same band that attacked the wagon train, sir. Now, this will give the railroad people another opportunity to clamor for government troops. I hope not, sir. We'll try a direct hit. I want to get Big Eagle in here for a talk. It's only a three-hour ride to his camp. If you like, I'll have him here in the morning. Good. Good night, sir. Good night. Early. Mr. Money hasn't come home yet, has he? He has not. Where did he go? On duty. Where else did he be going? When will he get back? I'd not be knowing that. What are you making? Never mind now, never mind. Here he has to kill the cat, you know. You shouldn't be sewing. That's a woman's work. Not in the army, darling. That's where I learned it. You men on the force should yeah. have wives to do things for you. Wives, is it? <laughs> I haven't pitied the poor girl that'd marry a man in this outfit. Why? There's a no good lot of heartbreakers they are. Are you a heartbreaker? Well, <laughs> I've had my day. Of course, I did have certain disadvantages in the way of a face, but... Oh, hold your wish now. Stop your questions like at this last button sewed on. Is Mr. Marty a heartbreaker, too? Isn't he, though? You ought to see him at Regina when he was there. <laughs> Who was he talking about last night when he said she was so beautiful? And who'd be asking? Oh, I'm just wondering. You know very well who he was talking about. But don't you bother. She'll be going home soon. We'll have Mr. Monty all to ourselves. <laughs> there. It's finished. And I hope it fits you. Is it for me? And who else did I be sewing for all this night? And there's days to go with it. I'll be making other things when I get around to it. Oh. <laughs> now I'm going to the mess hall to get you some breakfast. Thank you, Mr. Pat. Thank you. That's all right, darling. That's all right. What are those Indians coming here for? Don't worry. They won't hurt you while you're with us. Mr. Monty's bringing them in for a powwow. Oh. Come along now. Of course he's all right. Come on, inside with you. The sun has shone on us many days in peace, my brothers. Now a cloud passes over the sun. Two days ago, a wagon train was destroyed. Last night, the iron horse camp was attacked. And many horses stolen. Indians who kill wagon train steal horses... Not from Camp of Big Eagle. They were Blackfeet. But if you mean Wolf Pelt, that they were from some other part of your tribe, that does not lessen the responsibility of your chief. If Blackfeet Indian make trouble, we'll send guilty ones 
to White Chief. I'll hold you to that. Give word. I believe that, Big Eagle. And I'm willing to admit that these raids may have occurred without your knowledge. But so that we shall have a clear understanding in the future, I have prepared a paper. A fair and honorable bond between the white and the red man. We'll speak in council with my chiefs. Then I'll expect your answer within five days. In the meantime, I'll need some guarantee that you'll keep your warriors in check. Huh? The white chief means he has great responsibility to the queen mother. He must have some token. The guns of your young braves or your running horses to prove that you'll keep your promise. Huh. If white chief think Big Eagle speak with forked tongue, we'll give something more close to heart. Little chief stay here. Token, Big Eagle's word is straight. That's more than I'd ask for. But it will do no harm for your son to learn the ways of the white man. And you may be sure he'll have the best treatment that we can offer. Go now. Send word soon. The Indians are coming out. Oh. What do you suppose they were doing in there? Probably getting blue blazers from the O.C. for the devilry they've been up to. There's something I'd like to tell them, too. Where are you going? Come back here. Come back here. Me, Big Eagle. Well, I certainly hope Mr. Standing is going to make you any of behave from now on. And if you got what you deserve, he'd send you all to jail. That's where you belong for what you've been doing. What right have you? Here, here, just a minute, Sue. You must forgive her, Big Eagle. This little girl was the only survivor of the wagon train. Golden Hawk, little spirit of the sun. Big Eagle, sorry you have trouble. Will not happen again. I don't see why you want to fight the white people anyway. They haven't done anything to hurt you. <laughs> we'll send present to little Golden Hawk. We be good friend now. Yes, I'm sure he is. But where did you get all this? Mmm, that's quite an outfit. You're a regular cowboy. Isn't it beautiful? Mmm. Mr. Pipe Monty. Yes, sir. I'll turn little chief over to you. Arrange for his care, will you? Very good, sir. Well, so this is the little girl you spoke of. Yes, sir. This is our other guest, Sue Sheldon. This is Superintendent Standing, Sue. How do you do, sir? How do you do, Sue? I hope you'll enjoy your stay here with us until we can find a home for you. Now, you go with Inspector Montague, little chief. That's right. Mr. Marty, is he going to send me away? Oh, we won't worry about that now. We'll need you to help entertain little chief. I'll go see about quarters for you, son, while you two get acquainted. understand English, so there's no use my talking to you.
I mean, you're a wonderful rider. Squaw ride? Well, I, um... Huh. Oh, you think I'm afraid, do you? Come on, help me on. Well, aren't you going to help me? Brave never helps squaw. You're not very polite, are you? All right. I'll get on by myself. Well, I could get on if I had enough time. You never ride horse. You just papoose. Papoose? Don't you ever call me that again. Uh. Stop grinning at me, and you apologize, too. Papoose. Why, little chief, Sue, didn't he want to play? Mr. Monty, do you know what he called me? A papoose. That's Indian for baby, isn't it? I'm afraid it is. Well, I thought so. Excuse me. Uh, wait a minute, Sue. Come here. Come on, sit down. Let's talk this thing over. I'm sure little chief didn't mean to be rude. Indians always treat their women with a superior air. The women seem to like it. Well, I don't. You know... Even if he liked you a lot, he'd act just the same. You see, we're supposed to be much more grown up than they are. There are some things you just can't put up with. Papoose. But, uh, but it's our job to understand them and make allowances. Would you like me to make allowances for him? He's our guest. So if you two had a little spat, I think you ought to make a treaty and smoke the pipe apiece. All right, I'll try. I'll give him one more chance. But only for your sake. That's right, for my sake. I doubt if I can do much with him, though. Huh? Ah. I've come to make allowances. Huh? Ah. I didn't ever expect to speak to you again. But Mr. Money says I'm much more grown up than you are. And I should try to understand you. So we'll smoke the pipe of peace. White squaw smoke? Well, I uh, never have. But we're going to make a peace treaty, and you have to smoke on that, don't you? Ah. I guess that means yes. So how do we start? Thank you. I only hope I've got enough allowances to hold out. Now, the first part of our treaty is that you're to stop pushing me. You're not to be rude anymore. I mean, uh, any ruder that an Indian can help being. Uh. And the second is that you teach me to ride as well as you do. Mm. Much work. There you go. Are you going to make a treaty, or aren't you? Make treaty. And the third part is that you're not to call me Papoose again. Do you hear? Mm. Does that mean yes? Mm. Can't you stop grunting? Say yes when you mean yes, and no when you mean no. Now, do you understand that? Mm. What's the use? I guess you mean yes. Well, I can't think of anything else just now, so we better smoke on it. I expect you'd better light it. Now, squaw smoke. It isn't bad. Anybody can make.
make a treaty like this. Must find Indians who raid wagon train and steal from Iron Horse camp. So Red Coat Chief know we speak with straight tongue. Think ones who make war on white man are from camp of Lone Buffalo. Huh? Why you think that? No, they make medicine to Sun God for war two moons ago. I go find out if they ones who do it. All right, you go. If find guilty ones, take to Red Coat Chief, so he know be eagle, keep word and speak truth. Get me a handkerchief. Yes, sir. You look uh, very nice. Thank you, Sue. <clears throat> How do you think I look? You look very nice, too. Mm -mm. Where did you get that dress? Mr. Pat bought it for me. Well, well, good for Pat. Thank you, sir. It would be a nice dress to go to a party in, wouldn't it? You'd be the belle of the ball. If I was invited to a party. Glory be, where in heaven's name are they? Now, what's the matter? Your handkerchief, sir. I put them in the top drawer here where they're always put, but there's never a one of them. Oh, the handkerchiefs. You have them in with Mr. Marty's shaving thing, so I changed them. I put the shirts in where the socks used to be, and I put the socks in with the underwear where the nightshirts used to be, put the nightshirts in with the sheets. Faith and Halpers, but where did you put the handkerchiefs? In with the socks. And it's taken me two years to educate himself where to put his hands on things. I was only trying to help. Oh. What are you doing? Give me that. It's only a piece of old buffalo skin I've been using to rub up Mr. Money's boots. Oh, why, <laughs> Sue, that's Pat's pride and joy. It's his toupee. Toupee? Sure, sure, Pat. Yes, sir. Oh, no. Put it on. Oh. I'm awfully sorry. I didn't know. It makes you look so handsome. You ought to wear it all the time. Oh, yes. He's a lady killer with that on. He wears it on leave. And uses it to fool the Redskins, too, don't you, Pat? Yes, sir. If any of them comes after me, it's a toupee he'll get and not me scalp. I hope. Your handkerchief, sir. You'd better get him another one. You'll need two for dancing. Two? Why? An extra one to hold against the lady's back. <laughs> Faith and help her. She's right, sir. I'll get you another one. You seem to know a lot about dancing, Sue. I do. My grandfather was a wonderful fiddler. And I learned how to dance from him. Here you are, sir. Sue, come here. Sue, uh, between you and me, I'm in an awful hole tonight. I don't know the first thing about dancing. Oh, I can teach you. I'll go with you to the party, and you can dance with me until you learn. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't be so good, because it might catch on. Besides, it'd keep you up too late. Couldn't you show me right here? Yes. But it would be better if I went with you so we'd have music. I can whistle. Well, what dance will we start with? Well, uh, well is there more than one? Of course. The waltz, the shotters, the two steps, the polka. Oh, we'll just concentrate on one. Uh, that, uh, that, that waltz sounds familiar. How does it go? Come on, I'll show you. Now, put your arm around me. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I want my handkerchief. That's very important. Uh -huh. Now, you give me your other hand. Like this? Yes. 
Now you start with your left foot. Left foot, all right. You ready? Yeah. One, two, three. One, two, three. Just glide along easy. One, hold. Uh-oh. <laughs> The main thing is to dance very smoothly. Uh-huh. Here, try this. Now, strip down. Don't let it fall. That's the way they teach you in dancing school. I don't know. I hope I can keep it up there. You can. Now, let's try it again. One, two, three. One, two, three. You're doing much better. One, two, three. That's fine. Just glide along like you were rippling over water. Oh! Oh! We sort of went overboard, didn't we? You're getting a little mixed up with your feet. Maybe I'd better show you how it goes first. Then we can dance together. Maybe that would be better. Watch me. Uh. Patty O'Casey, he wanted to walk. But his feet were not gated that way. So we saw a professor and paid his case and said he was willing to pay. How with me? One. Two, three, parents like me. You're quite a dandy, but you have your folks. While your right foot is lazy, your left foot is crazy. But don't be a navy, I'll teach you to walk. One, two, three, balance like me. You're quite a dandy, but you have your folks. While your right foot is lazy, your left foot is crazy. But don't be a lazy, I'll teach you to walk. <laughs> Remember it just as though it were tonight. That little squall go sleep. I guess if everybody else can stay up dancing, I can stay up and watch them. Red coat make her. He squall? He will not. Honey. Dance like that and not make her squall. She's only doing that to be nice to her. Indian dance better. Use feathers. Oh, let me try it on. No, only brave wear feathers. Well, I've got one anyway. Oh. Where'd you get all these things? Warrior bring. Bring TP too. Little chief, no sleep, white man house. You could sleep anywhere if you were tired enough. Hmm, forgot. My father sent pony, present for you. A pony for me? Where is it? Show me. Aren't you coming? Brave always go first. Squaw, walk behind. Walk behind? I will not. Then brave not go. If we hadn't made a peace treaty. Well, all right. But this is just about the last of my allowances. Hmm. That if Indian women put up with being treated like this, they must be. Squaw, keep quiet and walk behind, brave. Make mine a two step, boys. Oh, give me a minute, please, Harlan. I'd like a glass of water. I'll get it. Thank you. Now we'll have it back on our hands. Why not? Making three a crowd, aren't you? Everyone's my crowd tonight, Harlan. You know, with all this attention, I'm beginning to appreciate the advantages of being a pioneer woman. That's great while the fun lasts, Vicky. But you won't feel that way when the going gets rough. And that's bound to happen out here, you know. And you think I couldn't stand up to it if it did? I knew you couldn't. <laughs> Look, will you tell me why everybody wants to rush me back to Toronto? Well, I, I was really thinking of myself. You see, we'll be stopping construction soon because of the snow. And naturally, I'd like you there when I go back home for the holidays. But suppose I have other plans. I might decide to become a pioneer woman at that. Don't you think I could, Mr. Montague? Beg pardon, Miss Vicky? Don't you think I could become a pioneer woman? I'm sure you could, if you set your mind to it. There you are, Harlan. That's one vote for me. <laughs> 
Isn't that a tom tom? It's getting closer. You stay here, Mickey. dancing. We're enjoying it. Maybe one day you'll teach me an Indian dance. Ah. Isn't he rude? These Indians certainly are a problem. You don't seem to have much difficulty handling, little chief. It took time for me to understand him, though. But it was worth it, because I expect to be here for a long time. Really? Yes, but it wouldn't be worthwhile for you to go to all that trouble, because you're going home soon. Am I? Aren't you? Mr. Pat said you were, and I'm sure you wouldn't like it out here anyway because it's full. Good night. Good night. I'll wait up for you. You'll need someone to put your clothes away. And if someone is up when I get there, they'll be off to bed with a slipper. Come on, kiss me good night. Now, what do you say? See you first thing in the morning. Good night, Sue. Good night, Mr. Monty. I hope you're not offended. She's a very strange child. Strange? I don't think so. She adores you. Hmm? It's just that you're slow to notice things like that. Perhaps. I say, are we men supposed to dance with each other? <laughs> What's the matter now? You have a face as long as the old woman that kissed the cow. He's in love with her. <laughs> me darling, tis one of the delightful misfortunes that overtakes the male of the species. Tis me that knows. <laughs> I wish he'd go back where she came from. Oh, tis jealous you are. I am not. She couldn't take care of him the way we do. I bet she couldn't even make his bed. And you're not doing it right either. Oh, I'm not, ain't I? You haven't the covers up close enough for around his neck. Oh. Huh. And you should unfold his nightshirt and have it all laid out for him. What are you trying to do? Spoil him? Hear me, bucko. I'll take that. Oh, Mr. Pat. And I taught him how to dance with her. Heaven help us. I know, I know. It's a terrible thing to be a woman in love. Oh, Mr. Oh, yes, I understand. Never you mind, never you mind, no. And Mr. Heartbreaking Ruffian is? He is not a ruffian. I won't let you see that. Oh, well, have it your own way, me darling, have it your own way. Close them pretty eyes now. Down went McGinty to the bottom of the sea. He must be awful wet, for they haven't found him yet. The sharks must have had him on the bottom of the sea. Good night, Mr. Danny. It's the jolliest night we've ever had a Good night. Good night. Well, certainly a lovely party. What's this? Chief Big Eagle say here bad Indians who make trouble for covered wagon and steal horses from Iron Horse Camp. He send to you. Show Red Coat he keep word. Take them to the guard room. The 
This fellow's dead, sir. He's been stabbed. But they're all dead, sir. Order out a detail to bury them. Well, this looks as if Big Eagle is showing his defiance. He knows the dispensing of justice belongs to the mounted police. Well, I'll take that up with him when he comes to sign the treaty. If it's ever signed. Chambers, if I should decide to send Vicky home, could you do anything for me in the way of transportation? I certainly could, sir. There's a supply train up on Sunday morning that'll take her as far as Winnipeg. From there, she can connect with Eastern Limited. I agree with you. It would be wise to get her away from here. Well, I'll let you know. No, no, thanks. I, I won't come in now. I'd better get back to the camp and see that everything's all right there. Good night. Good night, Chamber. Won't change your eggs, sir. Got that fresh. I just saw the cook take her from under the hen with his own hands. Oh, no, thanks. Baked apple and milk, all ready for you. I'm not hungry this morning, thank you. Heaven help us. More than one suffering from the same complaint this morning, I'm thinking. Well, I'll get a bit of work done, sir. Hmm? Uh, oh, yes, go ahead. Was it a nice party? Yes, very nice. Is she a good dancer? Very good. Better than I am? Oh, I wouldn't say that. Are you going to marry her? Marry her? Well, I was watching your dance again last night. The way she looked at you, the way you looked at her, I thought maybe... Don't you think you ought to have your breakfast? Yes, sir. But I suppose that when people were in love, they always got married. She's going home tomorrow. Even little chief that. You'd better run along and play with little cheese. You can me for anything. Just tell Mr. Pat. I will. Good morning, Miss Vicky. I was hoping I'd see you before you left. I'm sorry we have to say goodbye, but Dad isn't in favor of my becoming a pioneer woman. He's right, Miss Vicky. This really isn't the place for you. Are you going to keep it a man's country forever? It's apt to be that way for quite a while yet. Then I suppose if we're ever to see each other again, you'll have to come to Toronto. I'm afraid there's not much chance of that. Why? Well, we'll be pushing farther west every year, and by the time I get back to Toronto, you'll probably be married and have a family of grown-up children. And what about you? Oh, I guess I'll just end up being the old man of the mountain. Well, goodbye. I'll always remember the fun we've had, and I'll probably find myself wishing I could hear you sing that little waltz song again. Hmm. I'll find myself wishing it wasn't so far to Toronto. Goodbye, Vicky. I'm coming as fast as I 
Claw right like Don't that. Don't you dare say it. No. Oh. White man, by. Take your time. If they're sound, we'll make a deal. What are they doing over there? Wolf tells sell horses to railroad. Well, let's go watch. Come on. Huh. Oh, all right. Go ahead. I'm getting used to being a squaw. Ah, now have to look. How much pay? We'll settle that later. You buy now. All good horses. Sure. Three of them's very good horses. They ought to be. There are three that were stolen in the raid and wasn't brought back with the others. White man lie. Indian ponies. Yeah? Well, there's Bully Boy. That's Lady Jane. And there's Steamboat. And I'll prove it. They didn't even make a good job of dying it. More of your thieving tricks. I wouldn't do business with your breed if I had to go without horses. You leave those animals here and clear out. White man pay. I'll give you nothing. And if you got what you deserve, I'd take it out of your hide. Let us handle him, boss. We'll take care of him. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You've been babied by the Redcoats long enough. But you're at the end of the rope with me. I'm going to have the railroad bring out government troops to deal with you. Iron Horse Springs soldiers? Yes, plenty of them. They'll keep you in order. With bullets. All right. White Chief has spoken. Mr. Pepper. Don't let him get away. Oh, yeah. You kids better clear out. This is no place for you. White man, no right beat Indian. Now run along now before you get hurt. Come on, little chief. Come on. Natosi, sun god, no answer. Three suns passed since talk to Red Coat Chief. He wait for our answer. Natosi, turn face away from our medicine. <laughs> My fathers, see what white men have done to your children. This is what they do when go their camp in friendship. Take them to squaw. White man's words are sweet, but heart bitter. Who has done this, my son? Men who make trail for Iron Horse. And now their chief has spoken. Iron Horse soon brings soldiers, kill our people. <laughs> And give us lies on paper. Who take your son and call himself your brother. I say make war while able. Destroy trail of iron horse. Drive out white men. All white men. Medicine answer. Not to see angry. Not to see say war. <laughs>
like war on a big scale, sir. The signal fires are burning and the tribes are gathering from every part of the West. Mr. Murray! Oh, Mr. Murray, I'm so glad you're back. I was so worried. You shouldn't be up this late, Sue. But I had to tell you. The little chief said the Indians were going to kill all the white men in Redcoat because of what happened at the railroad camp. At the railroad camp? What happened, Sue? The Indians tried to sell Mr. Chambers his own horses back. He got so mad because they were trying to cheat him. He said he was going to bring soldiers out to make them behave. The Indians didn't like that. When they tried to leave, the workmen pulled them off their horses and started hitting them. I can try to reach Big Eagle, sir, and explain that he has nothing to fear from Chambers' threats. I'm afraid it's too late for talk now. What is it, Father? More trouble? Yes, Mickey, plenty. And our friend Chambers started it. Let's take a look from the tower. Squaw put out finger. I let you cut it. I will not. Squaw afraid? Well, no. Oh, you did. It's bleeding. Now put together. Make Golden Hawk and Little Chief blood brothers. You mean this will make me an Indian? Hmm. Indian now. Will my face turn red? No. You stay pale face. I'm glad of that. Oh, but if I'm a member of your tribe, they'll all be my relations, won't they? Not Wolf Pelt. He bad Indian. Him steal horses from white man camp. He did? Then why didn't your father send him to Mr. Stanning like he did the others? Father not know. Wolf Pelt lie. Say he not one of them. Other Indians not tell. Well, I'm going to tell. You belong to tribe now. Must keep secret. But he should be punished. We catch him wolf pelt right time. Not tell now. We put in treaty. Yes, sir. 
What's happened? Our camp was raided. We had to fight our way out. I told you weeks ago that you couldn't keep order in this territory without troops. Now we're trapped. The tracks are torn up behind us and the bridge is burned. The telegraph lines are down. They've probably killed half the men in my camp by now. Mount a detachment to go to their aid. Bring the workmen here if the situation warrants and have Churchill take charge. Yes, sir. But the few men you can send won't stop 2,000 bloodthirsty savages. We wouldn't be facing this situation, Mr. Chambers, if it weren't for your unreasonable conduct. My unreasonable conduct? You're presuming on our authority, threatening to bring the militia here to make war on the Indians. Well, I... Perhaps I, I was a little hasty, You were more than that. Your stupidity is responsible for endangering lives and property in my charge. In the future, keep to the building of your railroad. But leave dealing with the Indians to the mounted police. Inspector Montague. Have the gates closed and see that the men are prepared for any emergency. Yes, sir.
That's it. Mr. Pat, yeah. I've looked everywhere and nobody seems to know what's become of Mr. Monty. Never you mind now. You've had no rest all night. Sit down there and as soon as I finish this, I'll dig up a bit of breakfast. I couldn't eat. I'd better go back out and keep on looking. Oh, oh I love that. Pleasant to Gregor. Are you all right, sir? Aye, lassie. Just a wee nip in the hand. Have you seen Mr. Monty? Well, no, I can't say that I have. He isn't in the hospital with the wounded men, and he isn't around the guardroom or the stables. I've looked almost every place. Oh, didn't he worry your head, lassie? Mr. Monty can take care of himself under any circumstances. Thank you, sir. Take him to the stables. Inspector Randall! Inspector Randall! Yes, Inspector? I was taken prisoner while on patrol, sir, and held at Big Eagle's camp. Just before dawn this morning, Inspector Montague was brought in. I was released to bring you a message. Go on. Big Eagle demands that the railroad leave his territory within two days, or Inspector Montague will not be returned and the hostilities will be reopened. What will you do, Father? You must send some word. There's only one answer to such a demand. Refusal. Thank you, Randall. Mr. Sanding, aren't you going to try to save him? Of course, Sue. Well, there must be some way to rescue him. Well, there aren't many of us. If we tried and failed, they'd put him to death immediately. We'll need help. I'll get a message off to the nearest post. They may get here in time. Iron horse still go on. If it don't go away, you die. Iron horse won't go away, little chief. Not for me or anyone else. Chief Redcoat, big fool. All white men be killed. If they do, many more will come. And it'll be very bad medicine for the Indians. Big talk. Indian kill them, too. I get cold water for sick head. Thanks. That would be a help. Do what for Golden Hawk. She your friend. Too bad you die. Make her feel sorry. Stay here. 
you get here? I came to see Mr. Pickle. They won't let me talk to him. You shouldn't have come. You should to. <laughs> Mr. Standing sent to another post for help, but they can't get here in time. So after dark tonight, he's coming with a few men to try to rescue you. But he's afraid that if the Indians see him coming, they'll... I have to see Mr. Big Eagle somehow before it gets dark. I'm afraid it won't do any good, Sue. It will. I know it will. Please, Mr. Indian, won't you let me talk to him, Mr. Come over here, dear. Stay near me. Oh, Mr. Muddy. If they do anything to you, they'll have to kill me, too. White devil child. You have to listen to me. Please. 
Don't touch Golden Hawk. She my friend. I'm your friend too, Mr. Big Eagle. And so are the Redcoats. That's what I came here to tell you. Redcoat, no friend now. Let Iron Horse Chief bring soldier to kill all Indians. No, they won't. Mr. Sandy won't let them. And you shouldn't hurt Mr. Money because of what Mr. Chambers said. I won't let you. White child lie to save Redcoat. All tribe know soldiers come. The Redcoats are the only ones who can speak for the great Queen Mother. The soldiers will not come to your lands. Redcoat lie. White men beat Indians. Son, God say, kill all white men. No, you won't. It was all your fault anyway. You deserve to be whipped. If you hadn't tried to cheat Mr. Chambers, wouldn't you? Right time now. You tell. The only reason Mr. Chambers said he'd pick out the soldiers was because Wolfville tried to sell him back the horses he had stolen from the railroad. Not true. No, listen. Devil child have forked tongue. Golden Hawk speaks straight. You one who lead braves who steal horses and let others take blame. Little chief lie too. Since live with white men, he have forked tongue. Stop. Why you not tell Red Coat about Wolf Pelt? Because little chief and I made a treaty to keep it a secret. So I couldn't break my word, could I? <laughs> you make treaty with a golden hawk? Yes. Make her blood brother too. No, make treaty now. Too much talk. All lies. Wait. I've told you the truth, Mr. Big Eagle. Honest, I have. On my word of honor. <laughs> Little chief, give word, too. They try to fool you till redcoats get here. No, wait. Wolf, tell, tell truth. Bring medicine. Who lie? No! No! You one who lie. Take him away. No, no, not lie. No, devil child lie. Get free. No. <laughs> white men and Indian how to live as brothers. She smoked too. Again. 